Hello everyone and welcome back to Humble Acres. So today we are going to be making this snow plow for the tractor. So I got my quick attach plate. It's actually the same one I used for the stump bucket and that video will be right up here. So yeah, this is the plow that came off of the Land Cruiser, which is sitting right here. Yes, I got it in the garage. I haven't really done anything to it though. So those videos will be coming this winter. I just kind of put it in here to get out of the weather and I took the oil pan off. That's pretty much all I've done to it. But that video will also be coming. Here's the first video of that one up in the corner here. Um, anyway, so this plow came off of that. Um, I still need to get a couple of brackets off of this front of here. Um, I need to get these tabs off of here because I'm going to cut them off of this and weld them onto the quick attach plate. And that's really pretty much all we need off of this. Nothing else will be used off of that. And then I have this hydraulic cylinder that I bought for my John Deere number no. five sickle mower, which video for me putting that on there will be up here in the corner. So we're going to use this cylinder to control the angle of this plow because these cylinders, they're rusty and I just don't really want to try using them because they just feel like it's going to be more work trying to get new seals and keep them from leaking and these old hoses are starting to crack and stuff on there. So I just think it's going to be a lot easier just to use this one. And since it's used on the sickle mower, I don't need it in the winter time and vice versa. I don't need this in the summertime so I can just switch it back and forth. It has quick couplers on it, so it will work perfect. So we're gonna need to adapt that in here. I'm hoping I can just take these off and then mount it right to the same points as one of these is on, and hopefully it'll work. We'll have to see. Obviously, I've never used this before, so yeah, we'll just go from there. Um, the other thing about this plow is the cutting edge is really bad. You can see it is wearing down to through the bolts already like this one is almost not even holding anything so i tried to find a new cutting edge for it but i couldn't find one that matched perfectly i kind of figured for what i use it for it's not going to get a whole lot of use and it'll probably last quite a while so i'm probably just going to leave it for now maybe i'll eventually change it if i find one but i haven't been able to find one yet so anyway let's get to making this I have, I did get this idea from a different YouTube channel. There was a video that I searched on making these and I'm using the design off of that. If I find it back, it was a little while ago I found it, but if I find it back, I'll put a link to it or something down in the description. But this is not my idea of how to make this all work. So yeah, let's get to it. Kind of funny, those came off way easier than I thought they would. The welds on there were complete junk. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a lot better welding than this was, so yeah. But that was actually awesome because they came off really easy, so that's a good thing. But anyway, I'm gonna get these cleaned up, get all the rest of this weld off here, clean up the metal. All right, I got all four of these ground down nice. Looking good. Got a little chamfer on there too, so the weld might penetrate a little better. So now we just need to figure out where they need to end up on this plate. So I'm just going to measure how far apart these are and then find the center of the plate and then, you know, put them on there so they line up correctly. And I'm going to put them all the way at the bottom of this plate. I measured, got these centered on this plate and got them aligned up and down so they're straight all the way across. You can see I mistakenly measured wrong there, but luckily I measured twice, so found my mistake and fixed that. I ground off the metal to make it nice and clean, and now I'm just going to tack them on there and then probably test fit it on here just to make sure it lines up right, and then I'll fully weld them on. Yeah. 
All right, well, everything seems to be lining up right here fine. Now I'm gonna fully weld these brackets on here, and then we will deal with the top bracket. So now how this is gonna work, I got these pins put in here so it's attached on the bottom. It's all welded on there. Um, so this is going to be welded on right here, which I'm gonna need to cut this flat. But it's gonna be welded on right here, and then this chain goes through here like so and when I tilt the loader back it'll lift the plow but when it goes tilts down it'll put slack in this chain so the plow can still float like it normally does so there's not very much room right here and I'd rather there be more room than not enough. So I'm probably going to tilt this up like this a little bit. Cut this at more of an angle so it's up a little higher. So there's more slack there so it can float more. I was tempted to, instead of doing this, I was just going to make it a rigid connection here and brace it really good. Then I, my loader has a float function, so it'll float and it would have been fine, but I was thinking it's also adding all the weight of the loader onto the plow. So it's going to scrape a lot harder, wear a lot more on the plow, and possibly ruin whatever I'm plowing on the surface I am. So it might dig in more, and I don't want that. So this is the part that I got from that other YouTube channel. So hopefully I can find it back, but I'll put a link in the description to it, but yeah, so this is what I saw him do, is he mounted this on here like this, which it needs bracing. In his video, he didn't put bracing and it just bent the second he lifted it, which figured that was probably going to happen, but I'm going to put some bracing under here, so like down to here, so this won't bend, and yeah, I think that will work out perfectly fine. You know what, I might actually put this more straight out because now that I think about it, this is going to be higher. So the plow is going to be down more, so there's going to be more chain. So I think I am going to put this down here, just a 90 degree angle to this plate. That will also make bracing this easier. So I'm going to cut this off. We're going to weld this right in the center, right on the top, and get a brace welded in there. And then we'll pretty much be done with this portion. We'll need to paint some stuff, but we'll pretty much be done and then we'll deal with the cylinders. All right, I got this piece cut flat and got ground down along the edges so it should weld on nice. Got the center mark here and we're basically just gonna center it on this and weld it on. I don't think that's going anywhere. Now I need to find some type of brace. I have these pieces from when I made the stump bucket. I probably could use them. I'm going to try to roughly mark one of these and then I'll copy it to the other side. But I want to try to cover up this hole. Something go like that, I think. The further out I go, the better it'll be. So maybe I'll go like to there. So need to cut that something like this should be fine and then something like that should be fine all right we got our piece here cut out so, should go about like that so I think that looks pretty good probably doesn't go out as far as I would like but it goes all the way to the bottom of this plate it covers up this hole, so I think that'll be plenty strong, especially with two of them on there. And this piece is pretty strong too, so I doubt that little bit's going to bend, so if anything's going to bend, it's going to be these, so yeah. I think I'll cut the other one out and then get these welded on. Alright, so I got everything ground down on here so we can get these braces welded on. Got the braces here ground down, ready to go, so let's get these on there. Yeah, I'm going to unpin this and lay it flat so that I can get some better welds down there. I might put a little plate under here too because then that would strengthen them up sideways. See if I have something. These little pieces I cut off. But... 
I guess I could weld them together and <laughs> then we'll put them in here. That'll probably work. I got these braces on here. I'd use those little scrap pieces I cut off. Put a little brace in the center there. Got these welded on. So this plate's done. I could probably paint that and call it good. Now I just need to figure out if this cylinder is going to fit on here right. So I'm going to take these cylinders off and then put this one in there and then hopefully it will just work. I can't put this cylinder in this hole because this cylinder is already completely compressed. So if I did that, the blade wouldn't be able to turn this way at all. So I need to make another mounting point out here. I'm going to use this same one and that way it'll be be able to turn this way when it's completely compressed and when it's all the way out it'll be able to go the other way so i need to make a new bracket that goes out here and probably drill a hole through here somehow i don't have drill bits that big and that's very thick so i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do about that but we need to put another hole out here so this can actually adjust both directions all right problem solving 101 um i don't have a drill bit to be able to drill a hole this big um, so I started looking at what I do have. I have a grinder, I have a saw, I have a hammer, and I have a welder. So what I decided to do was the tabs like these on the other side, there and there, I cut those off. So I have both of those here. And I cut a notch out of the frame here. And I'm going to weld this one with a hole in it right there that makes a hole and I'm gonna weld this one on the top and that makes another hole so it'll be just as strong as it was if not stronger because there's more metal and we'll have a top one too and that's how you problem solve and use what you have all right so everything is done I need to get this spun around get that hooked up and then get the tractor in here to hook it up on there. Let's look at the hydraulics and see if that works. So if you're not aware, this is a quick coupler and I didn't actually order this with the tractor. It, the dealer put it on because they didn't have any other quick couplers apparently. You're supposed to have one of these adapters on each and every attachment you have, but just this part here that comes down to here just this part here is like $230 so I wasn't gonna buy any other ones so I figured I would just put some quick couplers on here and then in between like cuz this is the old, this and my grapple are the only attachments that I have that have hydraulic hookup on them I figured I would just switch in between the two in between seasons because this is actually really nice to hook up in here. You don't have to release the pressure or anything. You just put it in there and it, it's just, it's very nice. Obviously, adding the quick couplers and everything on there makes it so long that it's impossible to actually hook anything up. The only other thing I can think of is if I take this off and like rotate it 90 degrees, so then they come out this way, which would probably work fine but I would have to modify the bracket and stuff then. All right, so it's been a while since the last clip. I don't even remember what I was saying in the last clip. It is now 7.30 in the evening. Um, I think the, the last time I talked to you was like four o'clock or something. So what has happened? Well, I painted that, which I only did the front. I didn't actually do the back because whatever. Um, so I got this all done and painted. That's all good. This is the big change. So with all of this extension stuff on here, which this is probably what I was talking about when I uh, was last talking, but all of this stuff being so long on here, it just 
wasn't gonna make sense to have it sticking way out here. So what I did was I built this bracket. So it mounts in the same holes and then it mounts on here. And if you can also see, this is actually upside down because if I had it right side up, this handle would be sticking this way and I'm pretty sure it would hit on this grill when I raised the loader. I didn't actually try it, but it was too close for comfort. So I put it in upside down, which really doesn't matter. You can still operate it exactly the same. So yeah, it is not a big deal. And then the hoses I just twisted because they just go through the loader arm and back into here and then to these couplers. So you can just twist these hoses however you want. So I twisted them and remounted them like this. It would have been nice if they were a straight coupler because then they would have just worked perfectly, but hopefully this will work. I don't think it'll actually hit right there. I still need to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that'll be okay. But anyway, that's it. I need to get some protectors for these hoses because they rub on the top of this and this one rubs right here on the bottom of this bracket and it's a little too close for comfort but I still have yet to actually try the cylinder to see if it works so it's dark outside but I'm gonna open the garage door turn the tractor on and try and see if this will work Well, unfortunately, I miscalculated that. So when it's all the way out, it's pretty much straight. <laughs> oh man, if, it, if this was closer in here, it would push it further this way, but the cylinder's too long to do that. Unless I threaded this down further, enough to get it over here, and then I'd have more stroke. That's probably what I need to do. After looking at how worn out this plow is, I was also thinking about how I normally plow my driveway and the road. I mostly have it turn this direction anyway, and I hardly, very rarely turn it the other direction. So my thought is, I'm just gonna leave it like this for this year, and Maybe throughout, like, in the middle of the year, I'll decide to, like, modify it or something. But this plow is extremely wore out. Um, the hinge right here is really loose. Uh, there's a ton of play in it. The, war the wear bar is completely gone on it. So my thought is, since I have the adapter, I can probably find a plow without, like, the truck mount stuff for pretty cheap. Because most people don't want to buy a plow unless the truck mount stuff comes with it. So if I can find just a plow and the hydraulics already on there, then I won't have to use my cylinder anymore either. I can just swap this out for a different plow and hook up. I'll probably have to change the hydraulics because they have a smaller line on them. But I can just modify the connection on the hydraulics and be set to go. So I'm just going to leave it like this for a little while and see how it goes. And I'll probably just be looking for another plow and that'll probably be a cheaper option because the wear bars that I was looking at, they were at least a hundred dollars a piece. I was finding some snow plows for like 200 bucks. So I don't know how wore out they were or anything, but they were definitely looked like they were a lot better condition than this one. So if you want to see this in action, then I will be doing a video on it this winter, obviously for now, I guess that's going to be it. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.